Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I, and I'm an Associate Minister at the Greater Plains Missionary Baptist Church, located in Chicago, Illinois, at 6758 South Wabash Avenue, where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Willis. Let us open with prayer. Father God, teach me your ways, that I may be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And thank God. Again, on behalf of our pastor and the Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church family, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson. And our lesson for today is God chooses the younger twin. And our background scripture is Genesis, the 25th chapter, verses 19 through 34. And our main thought or memory verse is Genesis 25th chapter and the 23rd verse. And it reads thusly. And the Lord said unto him, unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manners of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. And the elder shall serve the younger. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his word and for the edification of our soul. Again, as we just started the first quarter of this year, the quarterly thing is God's exceptional choice. And you hit one for the month of September. God calls Abram, Abraham's family. In our lesson today, the focus is on the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Promised to him and Sari by God that he would bless them with this son and that through this son would come many nations, a great nation, a great nation which would lead to many nations, which was last week's lesson, Genesis 12 and two. And in the lesson that gave, after years, actually 95 years when the promise was made to Abraham and Sarah that they would have a child Abraham was 75 Isaac wasn't born for 20 more years he's 95 years old when he had his first child after years of no children which meant that Abraham had no heirs God blessed Abraham and Sarah with a son Isaac, Genesis 21, 2-3, two but in here in this lesson when he was born, 19b, Abraham begat Isaac, and Abraham sent a servant in Genesis 24, 1-10, back to his homeland of Mes Mesopotamia, to find Isaac a wife. Remember, Israelites, the nation of Israel was not allowed to marry into other nations. So Abraham sent for the daughter of his nephew, the sister of Laban, who would serve a very important part in the descendants of Abraham. Genesis 29, 10 to 12, Genesis 30, 25 to 31, in verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he told Rebekah 
took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethula, the Syrian of Panadaram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac had the same problem that his dad had, infertility and Rebekah. And him, they weren't able to conceive or to conceive a child. So he prayed, he entreated, verse 21, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord was entreated to him and Rebecca, his wife, conceived. His wife conceived a child as his father Abraham had done in Genesis 15 verses 1 through 4. After he had entreated, prayed to God, God answered that prayer. Also, it was 20 years from the time he married Rebecca until she conceived. It was 20 years from the time God made the promise to Abraham until Sarah conceived. And, and though what had been impossible through their phys their norm through physical intimate action, God answered Isaac as he had answered his father. Prayer and Rebecca. Prayer answered by God and Rebecca conceived. Not only did God bless Rebecca to conceive, but there were more than one child in Rebecca's womb. There was children. They were having serious conflicts, though, struggle. So Rebecca being troubled, she prayed and treated to the Lord for comfort and peace. And the children, 22, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Prayer. It's 23, the main thought. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manners of people shall be separated from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Okay. The Lord God answers her, but he tells her exactly why the struggle is. He tells her it's two nations, it's two different kind of people in there. They're going to be both from your, your sons, but they're going to have different personality. They're going to be different people, two different nations, everything. And it again speaks to the promise to Abraham that he will be a father of many nations. Next, God tells Rebecca something that goes against everything in ancient society and the legal system. That the elder, which is the older, would serve the younger. The older was always the most significant child. The male, the older male. Even if the older male was younger than the older sister, the older male had a higher position of authority in the family structure because all things was run by men in ancient time. And a woman couldn't be an heir, as we spoke about that last week. And he tells her, and this goes against not only the ancient science, social system, but the legal system too. Because the oldest male was always the most significant to child because a double portion of the inheritance of the father to continue the family lineage went to the oldest male. And he would be responsible for taking care of the family line. You know, 
Names of children in biblical days often reflect something about the relationship between God and the parents, as in this case, Esau had red hair and or skin, or he was Rudy, as was used to describe David, King David, when he was a shepherd boy in the field, 1 Samuel 16 and 12. Esau's physical attributes would later play a major role in how he would be he would lose his birthright. Verses 24 to 25. Jacob came out next, holding Esau's heel. Jacob's name also can be translated or means grasping for protection or restraint, but more importantly, fraud and trickery, which reveals itself later in this very lesson. As Jacob was shrewd and cunning in taking whatever he wanted, verse 26 says, and after that came his brother out and his hands took hold on Esau's hill, and his name was Jacob, and Isaac was three score years old when she when she bare them. Twenty years. Again, twenty years from marriage to child for Isaac and Rebecca. Twenty years. Seventy five to ninety five for Abraham and Sarah to have Isaac from the promise by God. Though it took years, 20, between their marriage and having children. But God was faithful to this family, even if they didn't necessarily agree with the timing. As the twins grew, they took up on different personalities, 27 and 28. And the boy grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in the tents. 28, important. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebekah loved Jacob. They had two different personalities. We just said it's going to be in, in verse 23, it says, two, manner, two manners of people. They came from the same seed, out of the same woman. But as often twins are, they can be totally different. Esau was a smart, cunning hunter who knew the land, the field, which was a very important to a family for their livelihood. He was a hunter. Not only could they eat the meat, they could trade the meat, sell the meat, or whatever they needed to do to survive. But Jacob was guiltless and upright, plain, dwelling in the tent, which probably meant that he took care of the operation of the home camp in some type of administration post. From the beginning, each parent chose, chose a favorite son of the two twins. Isaac Esau because he was a hunter and his father was a meat eater. He liked venison, deer. And Rebecca favored Jacob possibly because he was always around the house. Esau is not Jacob. Excuse me. Jacob being close to home all day most likely helped in meal preparation. It said in verse 29, and Jacob saw a pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. So he probably also helped in the cooking. He cooked some pottage and stew. Esau had been in the field hunting and doing whatever he did all day and he was exhausted. Esau is not just asking to eat. He is so exhausted, faint, as it say in the word, 
He is asked them as if he is begging. Because of this, he would be called Edom or be and become his people would become the Edomites. Edom is also another word for red, as Esau is. As his name, for his, his name was referred to as birth. His descendants would be the Edomites. And as God promised, Rebekah through, through Esau was the older. He and his descendants would serve the young. The Edomites were in constant conflicts with the Israelites, but the Israelites had the upper hand on them more times than not. So even though he had his own nation and descendants, they were still serving his brother, the Israelites. Oh. Now Esau, though Esau was cunning in the field, Jacob was more intellectually advanced and he saw this chance to take advantage of his brother's home. If Esau, if Esau sold his birthrights, he would be given up the firstborn birthright, which is a double portion of his father's estate, which would have been sizable because Isaac was very wealthy. Verse 31, and Jacob said, sell me this day that birthright. 32, and Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? See, Esau, he blinded by his hunger. He was so focused on gratifying his physical desire right now for the short term that he was willing to give up his lifelong blessing for immediate pleasure. And so often, we miss our blessing because we want to be happy right now and tomorrow we still won't be satisfied now jacob tells esau to swear that's an oath because once he did he could not break it or take it back because through god allowed his people to take oaths of vows if they were broken it would raise divine judgment upon that person. And, and that's verse 33. And Jacob said, swear me, swear to me this day. And he sweared unto him and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. 34. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Jacob achieved his goal. He got what he wanted by a bowl of soup and some bread. And got that first birthright, that firstborn birthright. And it takes us back to the older serving the younger. Because as long as he had the birthright, Esau had to serve Jacob because the rest of his life, his part of the family inheritance was controlled by the younger brother. And if we come to the close of this lesson, God chose the younger twin. God's plans don't always make sense to us, but they always work if we trust in God, knowing that he has never failed us yet and never will. Though this family was dysfunctional from the beginning with the parents each favoring one son over the other, Esau desired immediate satisfaction versus long-term blessing because of this God's love and power for his people turns into a rivalry about individual self-interest. Just as God worked through this dysfunctional family to achieve his goal, he can and will 
do the same today through us and our family to achieve his will. And remember, God chooses who he wants to choose. And whoever he chooses, he equips to be successful in the name of Jesus. And again, on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Kevin Wilkes, and the Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church family, thank you for being a part of our Sunday School lesson. Let us pray. God bless us and God keep us all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday school lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why don't you join us for our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love them.